What's going on guys? Gabe with Baboo Dork and first time visiting this channel, smash the subscribe button, hit the like button, join in on the conversation below and make sure you make it funny because after I do these videos, I have really nothing else to do except read these comments and then reply. Well, as long as they're funny. Now let's go ahead and look at AMC and let's look at the S&P. These look like paternal twins and with that being said, it's just a really good feeling to see AMC run with the markets. Now we had a few red days and there was a lot of speculation of Evergrande. There was speculation on the Fed meeting and we're going to jump into that in a second. Now let's go ahead and look at what I saw with AMC, particularly on the four hour daily here. So I see something here and I see AMC attempting to bounce back into this trend. As you guys can see this orange line here, we do have resistance at 44.57, but I did say yesterday that $38 was acting as support. Also on the four hour daily, we see the stochastic pointing upwards and we see that there is a crossover on the MACD line and the signal line and we see green on the histogram so it's a shift in momentum we had a major sell-off guys i know it got a lot of people panicked we had evergrande which uh chairman Powell talked about it's a china thing corporate debt defaults are not a common thing in the united states so it's a very isolated thing that takes care of the evergrande fear next up we talk about the easy money policy and the easing, right? The quantitative easing. So what we gathered from that today was, hey guys, as you were, we'll resume in November and we'll look at the numbers, but until further substantial progress, which is the key word, there's really not gonna be much change to the policy, but we will not see that easing, at least until November. And this makes sense, right? Because employment's not where, where it's at. And then we got inflation. Now, inflation is a rather interesting thing because inflation is not due to monetary policy, but supply constraints. We have cars, guys, used cars that are going for more than brand new cars. And then you see car dealerships trying to like counter that imbalance by adding dealer markups to brand new vehicles. You also see that in, 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 in the likes of, uh, let's say PlayStation 5s or Xbox Series Xs, where you have to find them on eBay and pay an arm, leg, unborn child. This is just the nature of it, right? So when you have bottlenecks, which Chair, Chairman Powell talked about, it's really the bottlenecks that is causing inflation. As people begin getting back to work, as we see these bottlenecks unclog, we should see inflation get you at or about 2%. And this is a target number that Powell's looking for. Let's look at the market. Let's look at AMC, okay? Because AMC is a very emotional stock. Over the weekend and leading up to this point, Evergrande, uh, you know, there was a lot of speculation on how it would affect AMC. There was a lot of speculation on how the Fed meeting would affect AMC. And that speculation, you can see right there on the chart, we had a massive sell-off, a massive dip. Now, when we compare AMC to the SPY, it sort of kind of like debunks the notion that, you know, the hedgies are in control. And I really want to start talking about that because I feel like you guys as apes need to be infused with a little more confidence in your thesis and why you're buying and holding. The market is emotional, very, very much equivalent to that girlfriend or boyfriend you had in high school. One second, you're in a relationship on Facebook. Next second, it's complicated. Next second, you know, you go on, you know, just a rant on how men or women ain't shit. And then next week is just like, I love you, boo. <laughs> That's the market. It's a constant love-hate relationship. It is very volatile. It is emotional. With that being said, I want you guys to take a look at something. Because whenever you're in doubt and you need confirmation that your emotions are painted all over this chart, you have to see how in this box here, we were trading at or below $38 for a good amount of trading days. And at that time, people were like, AMC's doomed. Diamond Hands had conviction, maintain conviction and said, no, hedgies are fucked. Let's go ahead and continue on that thesis of hedgies are fucked because we can go on over to Ortex here 
And we could see short interest, 19.91%, cost to borrow, 4.33. Now, I have some data points here that I want to look at. And here is the days to cover based on 10 days. And this is on an uptrend. When we look at estimated short interest, this is also on an uptrend and very comparable to the short interest before the first run up. Now, you guys would say, well, hey, we peaked again and we didn't run up then. Well, this peak was rather abrupt, right? It was just boom. And what we want to see for the squeeze play is a continue and gradual continuation of the estimated short interest. When that happens, we're essentially creating pressure. There's so much pressure and then inevitably we have to squeeze, right? So I tweeted on Twitter, when you come from nothing, everything's profit. I want you to think about your origin story and why you hold, why you bought an at two, why you bought an at eight, 10, 12, 15, 30. We all have pretty much a common goal, which is to win. To show the world that we're not dumb money. To show the world that we are not crazy. To show our peers, fellow apes, that we stand strong. If you sold at 40 and you bought the dead pay, good for you, you made profit. But that's the name of the game. We have nothing to lose. We buy and we hold and we buy some more. So think about it. Green days, you're excited. It facilitates hopium. Red days, facilitates an action. A paranoia. Uh, shit, should I sell? Damn, I just sold. So guys, just stay focused. We are well on our way. We're showing strength. And we ain't fucking leaving. This is Gabe. I'm signing out. Peace.